Hi everyone, this is uh, Ensembles Techniques Part 4, where we will look at boosting. So in this video, we will get a general idea about the boosting algorithm, and also we will put it on a pseudocode, on the key four steps within a boosting algorithm, highlighting the important mathematical formulations along the way. Then we'll look at loss functions from a regression point of view, the top three loss functions that are commonly used within data science. Okay? All right, let's get started. So we now have been given a data set, and then we do have an hypothesis of how we're going to be building a model around this data. So in such a context, we will build a model. Let's, in this particular case, take an example where we are building a model called Model 1 by training it. And subsequent to the training of the model, we are then fitting it through a test set, following which we understand the errors that are in the model's output. Okay. So now this is where boosting comes in. What boosting says is, look, yes, you have errors in these models that you have put through after the training set. Now let's build a model specifically for these errors with a focus on these errors so that our accuracies can be improved. So that's the kind of general idea behind boosting, where you now build another model where your focus is on these errors following which you now have two models, model one and model two, that you will put them together when you make your final ensemble prediction. Okay? So now obviously we don't have to necessarily stop with model one and model two, and it can be going on and on for more and more models as we look at errors from the model and then build one another model which will focus on these errors. And finally, we'll ensemble all these models outputs together for the final prediction. Okay. Now, let's try and put that in pseudocode to, to f understand the algorithm. There, there are four key steps. Number one, we take our model FK in our particular context. Next, we compute the residuals of the FK, from the model FK for actual values, and we are marking them as uh, EI for the errors, which are the residuals. Now, look at this more from a regression context because that's why I've put these particular notations and we'll be generalizing them in a minute. Next, what we do is we build a new model GK where the focus is to predict all these error points. Okay, and so we want to approximate error points using another model GK, following which when we make the ensemble model, we will actually be putting both FK and GK together, and we're going to call it the ensemble model FK plus one. Okay, so that's the general scheme of things, but there are ways to generalize this because this is now written more in a regression context and not necessarily applicable outside regression. So the first thing we will do is we will generalize that portion of error, and that can be generalized as a partial derivative of a loss function's change with respect to our model change in the model okay this particular loss function could be anything as simple as a mean square error this is one of the popular loss functions within the regression space and in fact we we'll look at a little bit more detail of this particular loss function later in this video okay the other generalization we will do is in here up if you see how we are ensemble the model we have fundamentally have had an additive model of adding them up with weights being the same which is one so f, f of k is having a weight one and g of k model is also having the same weight of one but that need not necessarily be the case therefore we'll generalize that to have a gamma introduced so that when the subsequent models are getting added in so in this particular case when gk model is getting added into fk we obviously have ability to weight them whether we weighted higher or lower is going to depend on the model okay so that's the general philosophy and the procedure the four key steps within a boosting algorithm okay next let's touch base on a very important function or a concept within this ensemble techniques and also boosting particularly which are the loss functions so we have seen earlier that there is a mean square error loss function for linear regression in which you have two terms, which is your actual value minus your model's predicted value. You're taking a difference of them and then squaring it. 
You're summing all those squares and taking an average. So that's the mean square error, and that's still relevant. That's one of the examples we had taken earlier. But that need not necessarily limit us only to that particular style. There are other functions. So for example, mean absolute error is also there, where you are still having an actual value minus your model's predicted value. You're, devi you're looking at the deviation, but now you're looking at the absolute value of those deviations. Okay. And let's see what are the differences between these two. So he up here, we have the uh, green function, which is basically referring to uh, the Huber loss. The yellow function, the yellow color is basically referring to the mean absolute error. And the blue is referring to the mean square error. So if you see how the plot looks, so fundamentally you have your predicted value out here and your actual value of y here. When you plot them, what fundamentally happens is you're starting to see how a mean absolute error is fundamentally moving on in both x and y in a linear scale. However, the mean square error has got a little bit more of the curvature and the third loss function, which is the Huber loss, which is conditional loss function, putting both mean square error and absolute error together based on a particular condition of a value. So for example, when the actual value minus my predicted value is less than a particular threshold, in this particular case one, then we are continuing to use a mean square error. Otherwise, we are continuing to use a mean absolute error adjusted by half. So that's the Huber loss. So in such a case, what tends to happen is your loss function actually gets a very unique shape of being when near the near the point, the midpoints, you still get the curvature. However, as it goes a little bit more, meaning you are having a larger loss, you are starting to have a linear growth in the loss function. Okay. So those are the important things we wanted to cover today. And in the next video, we are going to be covering the details of both Ada Boost. And then subsequent videos will also cover gradient boost. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this. Till next video, goodbye.